All right, so today we're going to be going over the NCP2515 CAN controller setup with Arduino. And this is going to be part of our process for setting up a connection with the Arduino so we can really explore the kind of things that we can do with the CAN line and get to understand processing information on the CAN line. These chips are really uh, nice because they have everything packaged together for us. There are a lot of options for connecting with CanLine, but this brings everything together because we already have the MCP2515 uh, chip on here, which is going to transmit and receive messages on the CAN bus. It also has a control logic, and it also has this SPI block, which is these pins you see down the side. And this is going to allow us to connect it to our Arduino easily, and with minimal work, be able to use the Arduino interface for all the projects that we're used to using Arduino for. So you can use the Arduino to collect heat from the room, record the temperature, you can log it and you can transmit it across the CAN line, much in the way that the temperature gauge in your car would communicate. Um, the second chip that we have on here is the TJA1050 CAN transceiver, and this is the interface between the NCP2515 and the physical CAN bus. It's going to be responsible for converting the data from the controller and relaying it on the bus for us. So the things you're going to need for our project is, of course, you're going to need two of these NCP2515 CAN bus controller modules. And again, you can get these at Micro Center or an online store like Amazon. I got a pack of six for less than $10. Um, you're going to want two Arduinos. I recommend using two Arduino Unos. Uh, but you can get a lot done with an Arduino Uno and a Nano, which is how I originally set this project up. Um, you're also going to need two USB cables or two power sources for your Arduino. And then you're going to need connecting wires. And I recommend the male to female connecting wires because you're going to be able to simply plug into the pins on the MCP2515 and then plug the male side into your Arduino and it's going to give you the flexibility to move your plugs around until you finalize your project. You're going to need seven of those per MCP2515 module, plus wires for however you're going to build your project. So the setup is pretty simple. Um, if you look at your chip down this side, you see you have these pins that each have a label on them. And starting from the bottom, you're going to connect this VCC to five volts on your Arduino. You're going to connect ground, to ground and for my project um, I have a common ground that I have the Arduino connected to on my breadboard so this ground goes to the breadboard the Arduino is also uh, grounded on there and that lets me share a common ground for my project um, the CS pin is going to go to digital 10 which if you're looking at a pin out on an Arduino is listed as SPI underscore SS the SO is going to go to digital 12 which is listed as SPI MISO. The SI is going to go to digital 11, SCK to digital 13, and then INT is going to connect to digital 2. And then just to show you, it's unfortunately a mess of wires because I have, I'm still on this building phase, what I recommend doing is getting a different wire for each one because you are working with seven different wires and I just kind of followed a Roy G. Biv format so that I know, you know, red comes before orange becomes before yellow. And then that way when it connects over to the Arduino, it's really easy for me to say, hey, does my red wire go where it's supposed to? Um, then the last thing that you're going to have to do is coming back to the chip down here where my finger is at once it focuses for us here. Um, there are two pins down here, right beside it's labeled like J1. So you're gonna have to connect a resistor here. Um, 120 ohms is the specification for CAN line communication. Um, and this is because you need a true zero uh, when we're going on the CAN line, and we'll go over that in more detail later. Um, what I found is you just take your um, resistor, which tends to have really long legs, I just snipped them down pretty short and wrapped them around the resistor and then dropped a bit of solder on each one. Just be really careful not to connect the solder across the lines or you're never going to get a good zero. And actually when I was doing this I only had 100 ohm resistors and they worked just fine. So I mean if you think about the tolerance um, that resistors can have, 
um, work with what you have, and it, it's pretty it's pretty tolerant. Um, I think that's not the most beautiful soldering job, but it gets gets the job done. And then the final piece for connection is um, the second set of pins right here is um, what is connected to the TGA 1050. Rather than touching those, we have these nice convenient platforms. And so all you have to do for these is take a screwdriver and lift them up. And that can, each piece when you lift it up coincides with this plate underneath. So then you just take the wire that you need, you slip it into here, and then you tighten it back down. Very easy, it's very quick. Um, the most important thing that gets kind of confusing, especially if you're looking online for these, is um, you know, they, they talk about it being a twisted wire pair. And for me, that was really confusing because I thought that meant we had to do some kind of complex switching between the two sides. Um, in reality, we're gonna connect from the one that says hi to the other chip that says hi and the low one goes to the low. So what I do is I simply plug my, I have white as my hot one, I plug it into high, red is my low, and I plug it into low on both sides. They're connected just the same. So I'm gonna stick those in and then I'll show you the connection. And these do, um, you know, want to slip out <laughs> if you're not careful with your connection. So just always put them on there and if you give it a little tug and it doesn't come free, you've got a good connection. So, th so now um, I would have this side connected to my data collection side. Basically, this is the side where you would put your weaker Arduino. If you don't have two Unos, this is the side that's going to connect to a Nano for you. Um, then your other side is you have it connected to across the wires. And then um, for our setup that I have, um, I've set up this side of the Arduino with an ultrasonic range finder because I've done a simulation of some of the basic functions that you would find in a car. So when the distance is triggered on the ultrasonic range finder, it's trying to mimic you know, the kind of collision avoidance system you would find in your car. It's gonna activate our brake system, turn on our tail lights, um, you know, tail lights and air quotes. <laughs> and then um, you can do a, pretty much anything that you can do with any other Arduino project. Like we mentioned temperature controls earlier. Um, you can position it with a lot of different things. And as we get more into our project, we'll go over those. Um, so that's all I have for today. Thank you.